Hello, hello. How's it going, man? Doing good. How are you? Good, man. How's how's life? What are you guys up to? Uh, you were in the studio today, actually. You're right now in Toronto. So we're working on some mixes uh, for new stuff. So uh, yeah, we're we like to stay busy, you know. We we, we try our best to uh, to recognize that you know most working adults have to put in you know 40 hours a week. We should do the same thing, even when we're not on tour. <laughs> Absolutely, man. So is it a lot of demoing stuff now, or are you actually in the process of, like, full recordings? Oh, yeah, no, we're, we're getting right into it. Yeah, no, we're, uh, we're, we're kind of getting to the finish line on the new album, so we're, we're stoked. Uh, you know, People's Champ, the single, is the first one, but then um, there'll be more music uh, coming this summer. How is the process of People's Champ? Can you describe that a little bit about the writing process and kind of the inspiration behind it? Yeah, uh... Last summer, my roommate Greg, you know, lived on Augusta Street. Uh, I live in Corkdown. Uh, he'd go to work in the morning, and I'd go, Greg, I need a songwriting assignment. So he'd give me a songwriting assignment, and he'd want, he'd say, give me a song. It's got to be on on my desk by the end of the day. And then he, and, uh, and but he'd give me like kind of a theme and a vibe to write to. So he, he says, you know, you're always ranting about, you know, uh, how divisive Trump is and, and you, and, you know, so the crumbling nature of our political discourse. So write about that and give it like a Stevie Wonder meets like Arcade Fire kind of vibe. I was like, okay, good. That's, that's a good, good direction. And then when he got home, I had like the, the bones of a song together. <laughs> so there's something to be said about a deadline, even for songwriters. Uh, which I think can actually be really useful. And then um, the band got together and we, you know, hashed out all the parts. And you know, Tony, our keyboardist, arranged the horns, and uh, Mike laid down the sort of like print style guitar. And we, we recorded over three days in September. Uh, so yeah, you know, it was really fun. And actually, you know, what's funny is like we were so fired up about putting it out like immediately because it sort of seemed to be in the height of Trump doing dumb shit. But then we realize it's like we're always at the height of that. <laughs> uh, every, so day. It, so it's every day. So it's never really quite a bad time for, uh, for for this song, I don't think. Have you always had, like, a political interest? I mean, are you someone, are you reading, like, political books or that sort of thing? Or just in general a news person? Oh, yeah. I mean, we're... Um, I like to say we're, we're pretty well informed in this band. You know, especially on tour, we have a lot of time to, to, to talk about the issues, and we listen to a lot of political podcasts, and we, uh, you know, our Twitter is mostly journalists. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, yeah, and I think in our, it's always come through in our songwriting. Like, Whistleblower, it, off our second record, is like an ode to a political journalist uh, who broke a story. Um Cynical Bastards is about, you know, the city of Hamilton and just the idea of community and an ode to the people who work to make it great. Um, you know, yeah, you kind of go through a bunch of our songs and uh, there's usually some kind of political band. Like, some of my favorite writers are journalists and that's, that's most of the stuff that I read. Is there, with regards to the, the ode to Hamilton, is there something specific and special to you about the city that that you were thinking of when you were writing that? Yeah, with Cynical Bastards, I was thinking of, I kind of wrote it out for Super Crawl um, a couple of years ago. I was just thinking of, like, I was just so um, feeling grateful that there's people, you know, small business owners and people that work uh, in the helping profession, you know, when it comes to social services. It's just like people kind of, you know, just kind of dev devoting their energy and their daily life to just making the city better for everybody. It's kind of a, a selfless act. If you're someone who's working uh, as a teacher or a social worker, or if you're a journalist, or if you're running a small shop, or, you know, if you're just sort of like spending time trying to make the city better, I think I really admire those kinds of people. So, uh, you yeah, know, Cynical Bastards is like, you know, if, if you want to be cynical, you can get the hell out of town. Otherwise, we got, we got work to do. Yeah, man. Is there is there something you guys are excited to do 
kind of before the show? Is there like a pre pre ritual? You're like, oh, we have to do this right before the show, kind of thing. On June, I think on June 1st, we're uh, announcing the rally market, which is being put on by Hamilton Police. Uh, Winnie Dickinson is uh, organizing it, and it's going to be in the plaza in front of the Morris Field. So we're really excited about that because uh, you know I think one of Hamilton's core identities uh, is is like the vendors, like the art vendors and, and the art crawl, and, and, I, and I really love that. So um, that's going to be happening before the show. Hopefully, it'll be a big Sobe ride. Um, from like McMaster all the way across the city to Tim Hortons Field, and we're really encouraging people to bicycle. I'll be bicycling to the, to the gig. <laughs> so like that, that that that's what will be sort of different and cool. I think about it is that it's just going to be very sort of community based. Are you a big uh, Sobe guy? Are you riding your bike throughout Hamilton uh, recently? Oh yeah, I almost got rid of my <laughs> personal bike, or I just don't use it anymore, just because Sobe's like just as convenient. Actually, it's funny. I, I have a um, if I'm in Toronto, I have I have the the bike share uh, membership for for the Toronto bike share as well. And I was riding through Kensington Market, and some someone waved at me, and then kind of chased me down. And it turned out he worked for the Toronto bike share, and he wanted to take a picture with me on the bike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's the kind of celebrity endorsement I can get behind. <laughs> Do you get people like? Did I just see Max, or that that wouldn't expect to see you? Like I'm just roaming through the city on the bike. Yeah, I'm I'm from like the David Byrne school, you know, from Talking Heads. He's a, a famous bike rider. He wrote a whole book about it, about bicycling <laughs> through cities when he's on tour. So that's you know, he's sort of been my role model in that respect. As you're out doing, you know, different tours around the world. Do you find a huge difference between, like, maybe Canadian crowds or, you know, American crowds, that sort of thing? Is it, do you notice a big difference? Yeah, um, yeah, I think the type of person who's interested in our band is pretty similar, no matter where you go. Um, but I'd say we have just, a, like, a longer history with Canadian fans who have been able to be a part of their lives in a more intimate way, which is really cool. Um, and that's probably the main difference, is that, like, you know, we'll meet someone... He's like, oh, I saw you open for them Crooked Vultures in 2010, and then I saw you, you know, play in my frosh, and then I, you know, so it's like we get that kind of connection with people. It's pretty cool. And uh, are, are you yourself, um, like, are you a big concert goer? Like, will you go out to see, like, a, a, a big artist if they come down to Toronto or Hamilton? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, that, yeah, you know, when we, we just heard the UK and we landed in London and that night uh, Arcade Fire were playing, so we got tickets and went to that and we're going to see Broken Social Scene in Portugal Demand Man tonight in Toronto. Um, yeah, I do I do try to, you know, go... There, there's definitely artists that I like. I'm looking forward to seeing all the time. Do you have a favorite song right now that you're listening to? Good question. Like, oh, the whole Casey Musgraves record is really good. Uh, that, that's, that's, I do recommend that. Golden Hour is what the record's called. And the song Golden Hour is awesome. Cool, man. Um, another thing I love, especially asking artists who aren't really in the genre, um, is about hip-hop. Are, are you a fan mm -hmm. of hip-hop at all? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, I'd say you know, I'd probably listen to more hip-hop than rock and roll on, in some weeks. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I love, you know, I, despite it, some of the things you said, I love my Kanye. Chance the Rapper's probably been like my biggest influence over the last couple of years. I like, I love Chance the Rapper. Nick loves like Vince Staples. I like a lot of the old school stuff, like Nas and Jay Z. Um, you know, I kind of like the new Cardi B record, to be honest. Uh, yeah, no, we, we listen to we love the interesting. Oh, Drake, I like, you know, we love Drake. Uh, my, who do you like? My favorite rapper is it's kind of typical, but I mean, I love Eminem. Oh, I love my Eminem. But yeah, I mean, you know, growing up, you know, the golden era of, of hip hop, like, you know, everything from like Mace and Puff Daddy and like, and then like, on to like <laughs> Nell, Nelly and stuff. Like, I wanted to be a member of the same movie, so badly, whatever, grade eight or whatever. <laughs> I feel like everyone, when they're younger, goes to that period where they just get so into, like, they want to be a rapper, and they get into the whole culture of hip-hop. It's just like a thing. Yeah, actually, I'm going to post Malone on uh, Sunday, too, actually. Nice. 
Actually, cool. I knew, I was, like, we saw Kendrick Lamar when we played Coachella last year. Yeah, he was amazing. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's definitely in like the top five best hip hop artists right now. I would say. Yeah, we did a good show um, a few months ago. Uh, Gold Link, who's a kind of interesting rapper. Um, I recommend that. A uh, Gold Link. He's song called Her Side Story. It's amazing. Yeah. Have you ever thought of if you were a rapper, like who you would be? Someone that writes a certain way, or like I would totally write that line if I was a rapper. Um, chance a rapper for sure. Uh, yeah. I like the way he sings. I think he's like the best storyteller. I like his sense of humor. Um, I like his melodies, you know. Yeah, I think he's really versatile. And also just like his production sensibilities is like right up my alley. It's like, I'm not crazy about some of the trap stuff. It's a little repetitive to me. And Chance doesn't really do that at all. He's, he's very like into the, like the soul, like soul samples, that kind of version of hip hop, which is a little bit more my, my bag. Yeah, and I can even imagine, I mean, as a writer, the whole mumble, rap, trap stuff is a little bit less appealing. Yeah, yeah. Lastly, just before we go, is there anything specific uh, you'd like to say to Hamilton before the show? Um, Something to leave them with sort of thing? Um, Yeah, I'd say, uh, well, thanks for uh, all the support leading up to the show. And also, just always treat your neighbors good. (laughs) Absolutely, man. 